Yo, 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 welcome to Yev's Builds. Today we're continuing work on the S85 V10. It seems like work on these engines just never stops. And if you're searching up this video, you are aware that the throttle actuators on these engines do have a tendency to break internally. So today we're gonna be opening mine up. They have 140,000 miles on them. I'm pretty sure they have never been opened up, never been worked on. We're gonna open them up and rebuild them internally. Replace all those plastic gears inside that do have a tendency to wear out because they're plastic. Of course they're gonna wear out, you know what I mean? Especially with 140,000 miles. Anyway, so if you're into this kind of stuff and you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button because dude, we have an engine swap in the process. There's the engine, there's the shell it's going into. Make sure to stay tuned. Welcome back to TF's Builds. As you can see, I decided to go with odometer gears. These guys, from what I've read online, are the OGs. They've been in the game for a long time and they know exactly what they're doing. They're a little bit on the pricier side. I paid about $240 with shipping. Not too bad considering there's not too many options out there for these throttle actuators, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start rebuilding. This is what the kit comes with, all right? They even provide you a little drill bit to drill into the shaft. I will show you later in the video. This material feels pretty good, I gotta say. Let's just see what the original ones look like and go from there. Before we start opening the actuator up go ahead and go to this area and pay attention to this movement right here you see that memorize it memorize this movement and just hold it in the back of your head just for now we will need to be adjusting this we're gonna need to make this exactly where this is now anyway take a t20 a socket or something start unscrewing these bolts up obviously while you're doing this make sure your throttle actuator is cleaned up and there's no grime or slime or anything like that and now just kind of pop it off and be real careful with this. This is the electronic portion of it, which I am not touching. Put this away for safekeeping for now and cover it up so that there's gonna be no grime or dirt on it. This little O-ring gasket looking thing over here, keep that. Ideally, you do want to replace it, but I can't find anything online at all. Do you see all this dirt and all this stuff on the inside. That's not a good sign. What does this mean? It means that these gears are most likely a little bit worn out. So let's go ahead and remove them. This one just slides up like that. So usually this gear is not the one that has issues, um, but you could see a little bit of wear on it just over the years of use and abuse. Of course, obviously there's gonna be wear, but this one does seem a little bit worse. You can see that these teeth right here, especially are very thin compared to the rest. Looks like this never failed, but definitely was getting there in my opinion. And you can actually see how this whole throttle actuator works. This is connected by a rod to your actual throttle bodies. And when you give throttle, this moves and this spins like that. The reason that bottom gear spins is because this gear has these little teeth right here and that connects all the way to the bottom right there. Pretty cool, pretty neat. Be very careful with these pens right here. Do not bend them, try not to touch them at all. They're important, why? Because they come in contact with this stuff right here. These two pins come in contact with these two parts right here. So if you misalign them or if you bend them or move them out of the way, you're not gonna have any connection. For us to do this job properly, you need some vice grips. Put your throttle actuator in between a vice grip, tighten it up. Odometer Gears actually provides you with a drill bit. It's a three millimeter drill bit. What we're doing is we're gonna be drilling right about here at a 45 degree angle or so. So right there roughly. Drill until you're about to touch the shaft. You don't want to touch the shaft. You don't want to score the shaft at all. You just get close enough where you feel like you're fine and then move it upwards like this. And we're gonna drill down that way we create a hole and kind of a gap for us to break this thing off. And the same thing on this side. Something like that. By doing this, we're weakening that gear and we're gonna break it off. We're gonna crack it off. Cool. Unloosen your vice grips, tighten it up right about here. There you go. Twist this because this should break off. Just like that. This gear is broken off. You can freely remove that now. When you are removing all this inside, make sure not to lose anything. There's a little spacer here. Just make sure that everything is there. We're right there. After that, shaft comes out pretty freely. 
There we go. Of course, before we continue, take an air tool or an air compressor or something and blow out all this grime and dirt from the inside because, of course, you want to work in a clean environment. Now, do you notice something interesting about the shape of the inside hole of this gear? If you said that there's a flat spot on the bottom of it, you are correct. Notice, this tip right here, it's all rounded off and everything. Boom, flat spot right there. There is a flat spot specifically for this gear to sit in. But the problem we're running into is that there's this little lip right here. It doesn't fit. It doesn't go through this gear right here because it's not an original. It's an aftermarket piece. But we are making it better. So what we have to do is we have to file this little lip down right here. We're going to file it down just enough for this shaft to fit exactly and tight enough through this gear right here. You don't want to shave off too much of this lip because it adds rigidity as well. You don't want it to be loose inside. Regardless, we're going to be reinforcing the inside of this and we're going to actually mate it and glue it with some JB Weld. But for now, we're going to have to shave off this lip exactly for us to fit the shaft into that gear. Now, come back to something sturdy like a vice grip again and we're going to file down the slip just a little bit. At this point, it's a good idea to take your actual gear and start test fitting it. Every little adjustment you make, start test fitting it. As soon as it fits nice and tight, you know you got it right. As you can see, my lip right here is completely flush on the flat side, but I'm still having trouble trying to fit this in because again, I don't want to force it in. This is more fragile than this, of course. So yeah, let's go ahead and shave down that lip. For that though, I'm gonna have to bring out the big boys. Safety first though, of course. And now, as you can see, we have a really nice and snug fit. We are not quite done with this quite yet, so let's go ahead and continue. You want the lip to be gone enough to where it moves pretty freely and pretty tight, but you can still put, put it on there with your fingers and your hands, right? But you don't want to be able to just move it around and slide it off way too easily. So just judge accordingly, shave off as much as you need to, because remember, a good tip I heard from odometer gears is that when you're shaving this, obviously you can't add more material on in case you shave off too much. So just a little word of advice. Take your gear with your shaft attached still, and we're gonna pin this. You take that same drill bit that odometer gears provided you with, and you see this little nub right here? This little nub, we're gonna drill at about a 45 degree angle straight through it until you drill maybe about a few mil into the actual shaft. As you can see, we have removed the gear again and you can see where we drilled a little bit into the actual shaft. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna drill about five or six mil into the actual shaft. That way we can gauge the angle this way, you know what I mean, and not damage anything else around. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. And now, if you look really carefully, let's just put this drill bit all the way as far in as possible. I'm gonna mark it with my finger. Yep, so the drill bit did break inside, but that's about how deep we got in there. So I'll go get another three mil bit and continue drilling on the next one. But this one, we are done. Right about there, put your washers back. Take some JB Weld. I've already pre-mixed some and make sure that you get all these little teeth up in there. Make a little layer all the way across. Make sure that every little tooth in there is covered with it. You don't want to have too much, but you don't want to have too little. Now take your gear and same thing, just add a little layer all the way up in the inside of this thing. My gear was on the shaft pretty tight as it was, but this is just a safety feature just in case. When you're putting this back on, see this piece of the spring right there, that little edge? That's to go through this little hole right here just like that. And what we're gonna do is make one full rotation with the gear to make that tension on there, right? Just like that. That is on there, but now we gotta push it all the way in and you know you have pushed it in all the way once the shaft is actually flush with the actual gear. And now we're gonna take that little pin, push it through the hole we've drilled in earlier, use something flat, use some sort of tool, press up against it and tap that pin in. That's as far in as we have drilled. So this piece is done now. So remember this movement we were talking about earlier? From the information I have, a healthy amount of play is anywhere from 0.5 mil to about two mil and this is just right under one millimeter of play, so that's perfect. And now at this point, we just put everything back together. This little gear goes right up in here. There you go. Everything is working nice, solid. And you do the exact same thing on the second one.
Well, as you just saw, that was pretty easy and pretty straightforward. As long as you take your time and do everything patiently, you should get the correct results. Other than that, that's gonna do it for this video. Clearly, there's still a ton more work to do. The engine is that much closer to being completely finished. If you're not up to date, we have already test fitted the engine into the shell. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit the subscribe and like button. I know it's cliche, but that stuff works. Anyway, appreciate you. Peace.